first section of Unit 1 is entitled, The Desire to Know God. So we want to start with what do we mean by desire? It's defined as a longing for what is absent or lost. So what we're saying is that we have been created to long for God. Well, really, what does that mean? God has written an inner longing into our hearts. This was described in your textbook as a God-shaped hole in our hearts that only God can fill. Do you remember when you were a little child having a toy that was a sphere and there were all these shapes on it and there were yellow pieces that you had to put into this sphere? You can see a picture of it in the corner of this slide. That is sort of what we're describing here. There is a shape in our hearts that is empty and void and that we are longing to fill. And we can try to fill it with a lot of things. But the only thing that will satisfy this emptiness is God's love. So our life's journey is to discover that relationship with God and allow him to fill that hole with his unconditional love for us. God has created us all as religious beings and giving, given us a vocation. If you recall from the reading, a vocation is basically a calling. And in this case, it is a calling for us to embrace a life of holiness. This can be as an ordained minister of the church, a priest, a brother, a sister, a married person, a single person. Our vocation is to know, to love, and to freely choose God. We will talk later about the freely part when we look at the free will that God gave us demonstrated with Adam and Eve. But as religious beings, God made us because he wants to have a relationship with him. He loves us. And he wants us to live in communion with him. What do we mean by this living in communion with him? Living in communion with God is to live a fully human life, the authentic life, where everything we do is to emanate God's love. As we read through the Bible, we will see that longing described for us in many ways. The Psalms provide two metaphors to describe the longing that we have for God. First, in Psalm 42, it compares our longing to God as a deer longing for water. If you think about that, with Lila, I provide water for Lila every day. She has her dish out, and she gets her water anytime she wants it. On hot days this summer, she drank a lot of water. A deer, however, is an animal in the wild. There's no one to provide water for them every day. They are on their own searching for a source of water they need to survive. That is how we long for God. We need to long for God like that deer looking for the water to survive. The second comparison that the Psalms use is in Psalm 23, compares our longing to that of a shepherd. This one might be more difficult to understand because we don't really here in the valley know a lot of shepherds, but a shepherd would do anything for his sheep. And the sheep have such a need for that shepherd, because without the shepherd, the sheep would be lost. So the shepherd provides protection, strength, care for the sheep, and for that reason, the sheep long so much to have the shepherd near. So we should long that much to have God near. Along with the Bible, we also have people who provide examples for us. They give us advice and model in their lives what a relationship with God looks like and what they have discovered in their search for God. We will be looking more closely at some of these models in class tomorrow. St. Teresa of Avila wrote how God reaches out to us every day. St. John of the Cross described the soul's desire to be united with God. And St. Augustine taught us that our whole life is the desire to see God. We see this desire that God has for a relationship with us in the Incarnation. This word Incarnation means to become flesh. God wanted a relationship with us so much that he did something completely radical. He became human. He became flesh. So Jesus Christ became truly man while remaining God at the same time. He did this because he wanted us to see with our human eyes the love that he has for us. That love was demonstrated in how Jesus lived his life and ultimately how he died because he wanted to save us from sin and from death. When we talk about salvation, 
We're referring to the forgiveness of sins and the assurance of permanent union with God. This salvation happens through the passion, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus. It is through this that God invites us. What does he invite us to? Well, because he loves us so much, he invites us into a relationship with him. He wants to spend all of eternity with us. He doesn't want to be separated from us when we die. So through Jesus, which means God saves, he has invited us to spend all of eternity with him. He has given us this invitation. We are the ones, again, freely choose, who get to decide if we want to accept that invitation. What God wants more than anything is for us to be happy. The problem we have today is that our society gives us a mixed message of what happiness is. The media convinces us that material goods relieve our dissatisfaction with life and make us happy. But again, going back to your childhood, think of Christmas time. We would think that what was going to make us happy would be the newest toy that was on the market. When we received that toy, how long did we play with it before we became bored and we wanted something new and they became clutter in our houses? Sometimes it was by the time we went back to school, that one week of vacation that we had, and we were already bored with this new toy. Then we were thinking of what we wanted next. So in reality, these material goods that we have will leave us looking for true happiness because the happiness that that item gave us is only temporary happiness. True and lasting happiness can only be found in God alone. St. Augustine tells us that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. We can search for happiness in a many number of places, but until we truly turn to God to fill that God-shaped hole in our hearts with his love, our happiness is only going to be temporary. Only a relationship with God can provide us true and lasting happiness. So if the media leads us to believe that happiness comes from things, and we find that only temporary happiness is what we find in those things, how are we to know what will bring us true happiness, happiness that will last? And that is found in the Beatitudes. Jesus gave us the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12, which can be found at the end of Article 3 on page 16 in your text. And these Beatitudes are keys for us living in true happiness. So, how does this really work? We have the Holy Spirit that prepares us to receive God's gift of faith. This can be done through the experiences of our lives and how God works among us today. That gift of faith, then, that we receive leads us to freely choose God with our whole heart and mind. We, again, are choosing God. When that happens, we will want to live a life based on the Beatitudes, which will then bring us happiness that is lasting. That is what is going to fill that longing that we have for God. It will bring us closer to God. Many of the Beatitudes call us to give and to accept love. St. Augustine of Hippo told us that there are four objects of love. The first object of love is God. We are able to love God only because he loved us first. The second object of love is our neighbors. We must revere and respect our neighbors because they are created in God's image. They are a part of God. The third is loving ourselves. When we love ourselves, it should empower us to move beyond ourselves and help others to see the beauty of God reflected in us. So how we live our lives, if we truly love ourselves, should truly reflect God. And the last is our bodies. Because our bodies are God's masterpiece, made in God's image and likeness, we must hold our bodies in high esteem. Hopefully this summary of the first section helps you to better understand what you read about. And now we can focus a little bit deeper on some of these topics touched on in this first section. Your I Am project that you worked on today was to help you to explore your own personal identity and to begin to consider how to become the person God created you to be, that authentic self, 
so that you can truly find happiness uh, with your relationship with God.